try to figure out what could I have done different to where I was to still be alive. I wouldn't be in prison for, as the judge said, the rest of your natural life. I believe in forgiveness. I'm, I, I'm a Christian. I believe that that's what we're taught. It's a process I'm in. I can't say that I'm there yet. People sell guns like water. People steal guns, trade guns. It's not that hard to find a gun. It may be hard to find a specific gun, but it's not that hard to find a gun. Not in Chicago. Daryl Jeter killed Indiana State Trooper Scott Patrick with a gun he acquired in this Chicago neighborhood. Patrick is one of 511 police officers, fatally shot since 2000 according to a Washington Post review of law enforcement fatalities. The night of Patrick's murder, the 19-year-old Jeter was on his way to visit his girlfriend near Gary, Indiana. But first, he stopped at what was then a hook fish and chicken restaurant underneath these train tracks. There, he ran into a friend who owed him some money. And I asked him, when I said, can I get those few dollars that you owe me? I ain't got it right now. I got something else. What you got? I was presented with this weapon that I shouldn't have had. Only hours later, sometime after 4 a.m., the stolen car Jeter was driving got a flat tire. Sparks were flying from his rim, drawing the attention of a motorist who called 911. Trooper Patrick, working the midnight shift, was dispatched to the scene. It was three days before Christmas. Definitely believe this, um, Scott's death was preventable. Um, the man who shot Scott um, I had quite a few run-ins with the law. Um, I think the, I think the law, I think the law failed him. I, I don't think, I don't think releasing people um, after just days, weeks, maybe months um, of the time that they should have served does them any good. By the time trucker Carl Dickel drove onto exit 9A off the interstate in Gary, Patrick and Jeter were already wrestling. He's been shot. Shot. My intention was to take that, sell it, and go get these little Door to Explorer dolls I've been hearing about for the last two months straight. But unfortunately, I mean, she, my daughter got her Door Explorer dolls, but daddy won't let them give it to him, bring it to her. Hey, Faith, I got a witness on the line, okay? There's a guy here now, and the, and the guy got into a truck. By this time, Officer Jeffrey Gruber had arrived and spotted Jeter trying to commandeer an 18-wheeler that had stopped near Dickel's truck. He's in a freight liner sitting here on the edge and this other officer shooting at him. I'll give another officer. A black guy with a hair nut on his head. This just got aggressive. In my world that I live in and I'm from, when you get aggressive, you're no longer an officer. You're just a man like me. He's, he's sitting right here, the officer's banging on the door. But this guy needs an ambulance right now. Okay, we got fire department on the way, sir. I remember Scott's lieutenant, um, Lieutenant Kaiser, pulling me into a room. And I can hear him say, I mean, I can replay it in my head. It's been almost seven years, and I can just hear those words. He said, Scott didn't make it. I had no idea what had happened. I, I didn't know what the situation was, what what had happened. I just, I just knew that, um, you know, six hours ago, Scott had, had kissed me goodnight and told me he loved me and um, very much a blur at that point. Patrick, who wounded Jeter with a bullet to the shoulder, died in the hospital. According to a Washington Post review, traffic stop shootings like Patrick's are the most common way cops are killed by guns. They account for 91 of the 511 police shooting deaths since 2000. The, our, our vests have a strap that holds the front of the vest and the back of the vest together. It, it penetrated through that strap. It, it, it went in, um, went through the top of his lung, went through some, um, some vital arteries, and then lodged in his esophagus. Straddling the shores of the Calumet River south of Chicago, Riverdale's business district has seen better days. Amid a grocery, beauty parlor, and boarded up stores is Chuck's gun shop and pistol range. This is where Jeter's murder weapon was initially bought 
by Dave Johnson. Police say that he paid $400 for the 380 FEG semi-automatic, and then upon leaving Chuck's on February 25, 1997, he gave it to his friend John Clinton, a convicted felon. At this time, Chuck's guns held the infamous distinction of generating the most crime gun traces in the nation. Between 1996 and 2000, police investigating crimes recovered 2,370 firearms initially sold by Chuck's, according to the Americans for Gun Safety Foundation. The store's owner, John Riggio, said in an interview that he isn't surprised by the Johnson transaction. But what happens after someone leaves the shop, he said, is not his fault. Clinton took the gun home to the south side and kept it for six years. Needing cash for his heroin addiction, he and a friend sold it illegally in November 2003. Then in less than one month, the gun was traded or sold at least twice before ending up with Jeter. God rest his soul. If I can go back and change things, I would. Am I remorseful? Yes, I am. Am I hurt? Yep. Were lives destroyed? Two generations, three generations, just period. Scott's death will forever affect my life. I mean, it's such a ripple effect. It's not, um, you know, it's not just my life. It's, it's our child's life. You know, my son never got to meet his father, and you know, his grandchildren will never meet him. Um, and I think that's where, you know, you think about when you lose someone. 